investigate um, the difficulty in, in dating across times or cultures and the misunderstandings that arise between people. We have uh, the legacy of colonialism does bear down on the stories. Um, the weight of history um, in modern shaping attitudes, all of this come into play, especially in the early stories. Um, Ghost Days, uh, the opening story uh, in particular, which is a story about archaeology and it's a love story. And you can see how he's tied the aspects of Chinese heritage and working that out with the whole concept of post-humanism to great effect. And this is something which you see in other stories. We have the second story, Maxwell's Demon, which follows on by talking about a woman during World War II and how she's co-opted in the war effort, neither fitting with Japanese people or with the internment camps in America, um, fitting in there. And it's sort of these compromises you make with yourself uh, about authenticity, um, identity, um, and all of these complex notions of identity get drawn into this story in a very, um, again, in a way that's enhanced by the fantastical or scientific elements. Uh, this is a case of where the technology is improving the characterization, where I mentioned uh, Byzantine empathy, the blockchain element is illuminated by the characters. Here we have the idea of um, sort of spirits of the dead powering this war machine, which uh, is central to Maxwell's demon story. These literal ghosts that are put into service here really help to underline and give shading to the characterization of the woman. Another thing that I will note here is that Ken Liu uh, writes women characters very well. In fact, most of uh, the characters um, that we follow through these stories are women. We have a, sort of like a Studio Ghibli thing, a lot of young women, a lot of daughters. There's a collection, a series of stories that is um, spread throughout the collection, which is um, focused in on a father a, a sort of dead father, but he, he exists in a partial AI form, and a daughter. And these stories are written with a tenderness and a touch, um, which suggests to me that Ken Liu's own experiences of father have informed them. This sort of a lightness to the prose and lucidity um, that makes these stories very accessible. There seems to be a lot of attention paid to the idea of being a storyteller. And I think above anything, if Ken Liu were to self-define, I think, and he does this in the beginning of the book, he credits his grandmother for the ability to tell stories. And he talks about how he sees himself primarily as a storyteller. And this really shows in his, his dedication and seriousness about his stories. So while his fiction is absolutely concerned with the world of ideas and the life of the mind, on the other hand, these ideas per se are not enough to appeal to him. There needs to be a way in which he can narrativize those ideas, a hook, which in the end um, makes them a great story. What is the value of an idea if it doesn't tell us something? Um, and I think a lot of authors are obsessed with the ideas and they, they want to share those ideas. They, they want to go, look, I've discovered this way of thinking about something. I want to put it out there, but they aren't able to harness that in a narrative frame where, where, they, where they can, like a storyteller, really get that across. So maybe this is what perhaps draws him apart from some other writers is how much of a degree to which he sees himself as a storyteller. Um, rather than just a writer or, or, or a writer of short stories, but this concept specifically, maybe there's a distinction there um, about a storyteller. I, I'm thinking, you know, sitting by the fire fireside. It's almost as if these are stories that are meant to be read to people out loud. These, these are stories that are meant to be shared. There is a more public and communal feeling to the way that he writes. Um, these seem like stories that he wrote to read to his children and you really feel that and that is where the emotional core comes from that's where the humanism begins we have a nostalgia here without a sentimentalism uh, i think he sets up these great dialectics 
where he will taste some aspect of the future which might be shocking people we have this often this trope about things are changed beyond recognition and whether or not this is a dystopia to if we are to consider oh look everyone's uploaded their consciousnesses uh we deal with these sort of things everyone's uploaded their consciousnesses people have changed beyond all recognition um isn't this horrible um what remnants of humanity are left um, but I think that Ken Liu approaches these sort of questions in a very delicate manner. He is able to both hold on to, I think, a rightful nostalgia, uh, if I can use that word, a rightful sense that there is value in the old ways, and simultaneously being in no way anything but up open-minded to the possibilities that different ways of living and being uh, are completely valid in and of themselves as well. Um, so we set up these dialectics where different characters and even opposing stories will look at some aspect people staying behind is one of the stories in this case it's what you expect it's people that refuse to go along with uploading their consciousnesses which is what is happening across the world as it depopulates and there is a seriousness which he treats all sides from Byzantine empathy about um, democratizing charity with people versus having institutions take care. So does this great job of setting up these dialectics uh, where and maybe this is where his characterization falters in that he has these characters um, be the mouthpieces for a certain view. But even then his characterization is so believable and complex that you don't really feel as if it, the, the cartoon straw man of the opposing view. I think he weaves in these dialectics. It's almost as if he isn't completely settled um, himself on, on what he thinks. He, he never leads you to a defined point of view. He's good at presenting things, I wouldn't say in a neutral point of view because he does explore certain ideas, um, but he definitely applies the principle of charity in giving each side the most uh, plausible and strongest case to advocate for their point of view and this really adds a richness to the stories because life is messy things are messy change is messy and the situations where that are self-contradictory seemingly paradoxical things can be held at the same time uh essentially and he sort of revels in these contradictions. He doesn't shy away from them. He revels in this ambivalent nature of, of the way things can change. And through all that, he still maintains a moral clarity. There's certain moral truths or um, certain values and meanings, whether it's uh, particularly through family and connection, uh, solidarity between conscious beings. These things always hold across no matter what else happens. And through that, other conflicts seem to pale and can be resolved and and people can have their own views within the stories and and maybe change isn't always good it's just different it's not good or bad it's just change in other cases things are lost but things are gained and there's this real exploration it's more of an exploration of the implications rather than coming in and um saying oh this is this is um terrible or not uh, but there is a sense of loss there there is in 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 when we talk about heritage and family there is um uh, it's sort of like he did write a story called mono no arari in another collection which is that sort of japanese concept of there being an inherent sadness or bittersweetness to the transitory nature of things and i think maybe that sort of hits upon the aesthetic that ken liu drives at it is this acceptance of transience but at the same time an appreciation of all that is lost and all is gained it's sort of sitting back having views on things but not being too attached um, to one outcome or the other and just completely feeling everything it, it's about being present in the world and feeling the totality of the implications that roll out from these changes the sheer magnitude um because often people or writers can be blasé they can toss off something about oh this has happened um but with ken Liu, you really feel 
the weight of every emotional and societal implication of what he writes about. And I know I'm going on here, but I think I can hone in on some other concepts that we might want to pin a needle on and talk about. So there's flux, uh, hyper-reality, there's a lot to do with perception of time that comes into here. I've talked about tradition, uh, there is also a fascination with dying worlds. A lot of li people in liminal spaces, I've talked about bicultural, a lot of people between, there's a lot of looking at the between, the gaps, uh, whether history in a liminal space or a state of change and upheaval or people and identity that are unsettled in a liminal space this comes again and again we have uh family it's not always almost never family um in a completely uh traditional sense we have divorces we have other things um we have same-sex couples, all these other things come into play. It's very modern in that sense, very progressive um, in its conception of family, but nevertheless quite adamant on its value. And it, I mean, whether intentional family, people you choose, but just a concept of being there for other people is very central. Um, and generational memory, if I can use that term. So basically, we're beings that want to pass in our genes. That's sort of one of our primary, at least from a bi biological standpoint, uh, drives. Um, and whether or not that explains everything, we are looking in these stories at how what we pass on affects down the line. What is it that we should want to pass on? What is worth passing on? What is the... Um, implications of what we pass on how much should we be attached to that how should we find meaning on what has come before if we are just a collection of all our memories at any instantaneous point of time all you are are a collection of your memories